Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, today, I would like to start my talk with the recent cultural symbol, the fearless girl. The bronze statue of the fearless girl by Christine Fisball presents a small but powerful figure of a Latino girl. It was installed right in front of the Wall Street's symbolic charging bull on March 7, 2017. Combined with the political background after the 2016 U.S. presidential election, this face-to-face -face confrontation between the fearless girl and the charging bull denotes the most up-to-date imagery of the power relations between the masculine power and the feminine power in the political world. Raising up topical issues concerning gender stereotypes, gender equality, women's empowerment, and diversity. So, as John Nagel points out, quote, the national state is essentially a masculine institution, and the culture of nationalism is constructed to emphasize and resonate with masculine culture themes, unquote. Tracing back to the 18th century, the political world of the United States was constructed by the, by the founding fathers, and the political leadership was defined only by men. The painting Washington Cross in the Delaware by Emmanuel Leutzer gives a glimpse of the Revolutionary War by featuring General George Washington and the diversity of 30 male soldiers. And also in John Trumbull's masterpiece Declaration of Independence, uh, it pictures how the 1787 Constitution was drafted and signed by 55 male politicians representing political leadership, power, and authority. By associating masculinity with political legitimacy in the first place, most early leader images have embraced women's politi political participation and envisioned no role for American women in the political field. For a long time, masculinity has been closely correlated with the representations of political leadership in American culture. In particular, hegemonic masculinity as a pattern of practice that allowed men's dominance over women to continue has played an important role in constituting gender stereotypes and influencing people's perceptions of leadership. As Meredith Conway argues, in the political realm, notions of gender collide with notions of leadership. Masculine traits are more common in descriptions of leadership, and leaders are not really described in terms related to femininity. Political leaders are preferred to be ambitious, energetic, conflict-oriented, and tough, while feminine traits, such as being cooperative, caring, compromise-oriented, and peaceful, are considered to be as manifestations of weakness and incompetence. According to Eagle and Carroll, the descriptive and injunctive aspects of female gender role define women as less capable than men in leadership positions and lead to negative evaluation of female leaders' behaviors. In addition, the inconsistency between leadership and womanhood has, has distanced women from leadership positions and has pushed women to follow the traditional values of femininity. Kathleen Jamison uses the term double bind to describe women's incompatibility with the political sphere. Similarly, double roles see this as a um, double standard used to judge female leaders as they are criticized for not being as tough as men on the one hand and are condemned for being too masculine when they mimic the male model on the other. Peter Northworth emphasizes that the gender stereotypes perceiving women as communal and men as identical are particularly damaging to women in leadership and put cross pressures on women, leaving women to be judged more negatively than their male counterparts. Moreover, mm -hmm. Torres Guard states that in politics, women should be both women and political leaders, roles that were not easy to combine. Whatever they did, the women top leaders could be subject to criticism, abuse, and harassment as women were exposed to condemnation not only of their policies, but also of their person and gender. Hence, as leadership has been a predominantly a male prerogative, female political leaders are challenged by social cultural stereotypes and institutional conventions. So let's look at some examples. Theodore Roosevelt's experience of growing up as a debilitated boy was interpreted as a lack of masculine strength and was affronted by his opponents and the public. And in order to demonstrate his political strength and capability, Roosevelt reconstructed his leader image as a man's man. So you can see from these images that, um, which present him as a masculine cowboy representing the wild spirit of the American West and a strong-minded politician representing leadership. And this famous photograph, Situation Room by Peter Souza, Pete Souza snapshots the top-level politician's relation, reactions while watching the live video feed of the Operation Neptune Sphere on May the 1st, 2011. 
Here, Hillary Clinton's body language has raised many public speculations since it hints at the feminine behavior of revealing personal emotion, possibly fear or anxiety. Just as Deborah Gold argues that, quote, 61% of Americans believe that a male candidate is better equipped to handle a military crisis, only 3% think that a female candidate is, unquote. In the cases of military operations or other political occasions which are considered to be highly masculine contexts, female politicians often face more criticism and doubts and are positioned at the other because of the incongruency between leadership and masculinity and the incongruence between masculinity and women. In recent years, although some contemporary researchers no longer perceive masculinity and femininity as polarized oppositions and come to see gender as multidimensional instead of unidimensional, the conventional view which sees men and women as, are, as diametrically opposed is still dominant in American, in American society. The social expectations for men are still different from those for women, as they do not share desirable traits in American culture, and the public expect to see the political leaders' images in consistence with their gender roles. So it is generally accepted for the male politicians to capitalize on their male attractiveness, and their tough line masculine images are promoted in positive ways by both mainstream media and social media. For instance, Arnold Schwarzenegger's symbolic masculine persona is effective in gaining political power since the audiences can achieve a sense of pleasure from his leader images. And the Mama Grizzly image of Sarah Palin highlights motherhood and femininity and is complied with her gender role and is well accepted by the conservative voters. The 2016 US presidential election has become a watershed signifying a new beginning of a changing political environment. On the one hand, as a first female presidential candidate of a major political party, Hillary Clinton has raised up public debates concerning women and leadership. The competition between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump has, has revealed partisan schemes and social political polarization not only caused by class immobility, racial discrimination, economic crisis, and national security issues, but also resulted from opposing stances concerning women's rights and gender equality. Meanwhile, social media are updating the spectrum of the digital age and changing people's ways of participation in political elections. Nowadays, 86% of Americans are internet users, and among the adult users, 68% are using Facebook, 35% are using Instagram, and 24% are using Twitter. During and after the 2016 election, massive amounts of women politicians' images, such as photos, memes, and comics, have been produced circulated, reappropriated, and reinterpreted on social media, resulting in both negative and positive influences. Regarding the negative influences, female political leaders' images on social media are still generally influenced by conventional gender stereotypes. Because of the great social political divergence, the post-truth sensation has perpetuated the gender stereotypes and has promoted the trend of misogyny and sexism on social media and in American society at large. First of all, female politicians' appearance receive excessive attention and negative comments on social media. This phenomenon has encouraged the objectification of women and the underestimation of women's professional capability. As Donatella Campos argues, quote, frivolous discussion of female leaders' appearance undermines the seriousness and credibility of female candidates, unquote. In these memes, the comments on the cost of Hillary Clinton's outfit and haircut has, have provoked criticism towards her political advocacy for women's rights and her reliability to become a national leader, reflecting the deviation of public focus when it comes to female politicians. And these images, um, making jokes about Clinton's physical strength, and also reflect the gender stereotype which sees leadership as strength and power and inherently masculine. However, the female politicians who have a masculine figure or who are not feminine enough um, will also face criticism. For instance, Michelle Obama was called an ape in heels in a Facebook post and her muscular images are negatively manipulated and reappropriated accordingly on social media. Also, Hillary Clinton's body figure was mocked and in combination with her political sense in a YouTube video and online images advertising a KFC bucket of Hillary Mildew. Secondly, as social media usually draw more attention to the personalities of female politicians, the feminine 
or masculine representations of women leaders' personal traits can also affect their leader images. For instance, as Ron Sherman points out, Hillary Clinton's person personality reflects a strong tendency towards masculine traits such as she is um, highly ambitious, bold, cautious, diligent, and dutiful, while it's low on feminine traits such as interpersonal sensitivity and mischievousness. Consequently, there are quite a number of images on social media questioning Clinton's gender role, her sense of humor, her aloof personality, and her compassion for others. And thirdly, scandals ca can have lasting and cumulative impacts on female politicians' leader images. On social media, this double standard is often promoted and elevated. Colin Fong points out that, quote, public images on the honesty and integrity of female office holders tend to be higher than that of male office holders, unquote. Moreover, Tim Highfield believes that social media outlets have constructed, quote, an extension of tabloid media culture and readership that thrives on celebrity gossip, sexism, misogyny, the male gaze, scandal, and sensationalism, and the victims of these actions are predominantly female, unquote. During the 2016 election, Hillary Clinton received a lot of speculation and criticism on her credibility as a result of um, her husband's sex scandal many years ago, and her email scandal and health condition also became the main contents of her online images. In particular, some negative images of Clinton were originated from the fake news on social media. For instance, these memes were inspired by an influential article on a notorious fake news website DumperGuardian.com titled FBI Agents Suspected in Hillary Mail Leaks from Dead in Apparent Murder Suicide, with 567,000 shares on Facebook. Also, Elizabeth Warren's controversial Na Native American heritage has appeared as a recurring topic in many negative images of her on social media, and has become her label in many images after Trump called her Pocahontas on Twitter. And at last, women's leader images on social media are often expected to comply with female gender role and present feminine traits such as cooperative, warm, and altruistic. The images of both liberal and conservative women in recent years, such as Hillary Clinton, Michelle Obama, Carly Fiorina, and Ivanka Trump, have emphasized feminine traits in order to be more approachable and acceptable to the voters. However, as it is mentioned earlier, female politicians are still challenged by the double standard and find it difficult to escape this dilemma. Just as what Roth argues, quote, female can candidates confronted conflicting demands to fit a masculine ideal while upholding femininity. The ideal female candidate for president would be a combination of Jack the Ripper and Mother Teresa, unquote. Nevertheless, we should not ignore the positive influences of female politicians' images on social media, for instance. Firstly, the female polit political leaders' images can popularize their political stance and advocacy and become positive exemplifications to familiarize the public with what the woman's appropriate women's uh, image should be. And secondly, women's leader images on social media also address topical issues and encourage people to notice and solve the problems with regard to women's rights, gender equality, and diversity. And thirdly, some Im images of women leaders address gender disparity and challenge gender stereotypes. These Im images posed by LUK use Photoshop techniques to present how few women are top level um, political leaders. And these comics on the left present Carly Fiorina's reaction to Trump's insulting comments in one debate. And the comic on the right names a team of female politicians as nasty women protesting against Trump's nasty woman speech. And these images criticize the incident when Elizabeth Warren's speech on the Senate floor was interrupted by the majority leader Mitch McConnell in February 2017, unveiling the double standard for men and women in politics. And at last, some women's images online have revealed the limitations of the divided America in a post-truth era. As a recent conservative ideal of white womanhood, Ivanka Trump became the center of the spotlight in Donald Trump's campaign as a visible symbol throughout the election. The comic portrays Ivanka Trump as a representative of full feminism, as she has distorted the message of feminism in order to attract women's votes, despite Trump, Donald Trump's sexist and misogynic speeches and scandals. 
The 2016 U.S. presidential election, according to Kathleen Julie, is the most memed presidential <coughs> election in U.S. history. Social media platforms have demonstrated their strong impacts in updating the forms, rules, and patterns of political participation in national election. Different from the hierarchical structure of the traditional mainstream media, social media platforms have created direct and equal connections among users, so the presidential candidates and the electorate can take full advantage of the participatory model of culture on social media and construct political discourses which are more interactive and popularized and have expanding influences. The leading social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter have become the vital catalysts of the popularization of the presidential race, as Haskanen and Butters point out, Quote, social media particularly energized these voters in unprecedented ways, as well as the candidates who were trying to tweak their way into the White House. As it has already been a tradition for the presidential candidates to frame their leader images as a part of self-marketing in political campaigns to strengthen and reinforce the candidates' personal appeal and policy initiatives, in the digital age, successful visual framing and online identity construction become crucial since they can showcase positive leader images of the candidates, form active and effective connections with the general public, and eventually influence electoral support. Utilizing symbolic leader imagery in the process of impression management or online identity framing can be viewed as an act of masking by concealing the original identity and delivering desired qualities and favored means favorite themes to the viewers. Besides, the construction of online identity requires active and continuous interactions on social media since it is an ongoing process and self-identity continuously changes in interactions. During the campaign, Donald Trump constructed his leader images with the in intention to appeal to the conservative voters who were expecting masculine leadership, supporting um, patriarchal structure, and celebrating nationalism. His campaign constructed his leader images as a patriotic and honest outsider businessman and manifested a number of typical masculine traits such as aggressive, arrogant, dominant, competitive, self-confident, and feeling superior. These characteristics contributed to his online identity as a new kind of old-school American man. His brief manhood resonated with supporters in their active engagement on social media. And this Trump style masculinity revealed the uh, American male anxiety and the popularized um, sentiments about manhood in the post truth era. The fo for instance, the photo of Trump having a Big Mac in his private jet went well on social media and became an inspiration for numerous memes. Trump's territory choice here can be seen as an evidence of his cultural vacuousness and his ability to access race by con constructing his image with one of the most common fast food and connecting him with the working class voters who are very familiar with this, with this color symbol, uh, with this culture symbol. Also, in American culture, the Big Mac is a typical reflection of masculinity as it showcases bigness, such as big egos and big ideas, and manifests the will to be number one, to win, or to be successful. The Big Mac then connects Trump's um, political identity with nationalism, patriotism, and U.S. consumerism and cultural colonialism, and thus appeals to the voters who have been expecting a strong leadership, strong foreign policy and immigration policy, the revitalization of manufacturing industry and economy, and eventually American, and America, which is great again. And similarly, Hillary Clinton's campaign constructed her leader images on social media in order to appeal to her potential voters and to state her political stance and advocacy. In particular, her leader images have challenged the conventional gender stereotypes by combining both masculine and feminine characteristics, reflecting her intention to balance between masculinity and femininity. According to Tara and Fox, even though they are comments demanding Hillary Clinton to demonstrate herself as a woman because of the confusing representation of the, her androgyny. Her pantsuit leadership helps to construct the typical Hillary's pantsuit womanhood. Quote, her pantsuits, the folder for many jokes, are more symbolic of a woman who has worked to blend the masculine and feminine to emphasize her competence over her appearance. For instance, the pantsuit that Clinton wore in her 2016 concession speech become a, became a heated topic on social media, and the color purple not only stands for bipartisanship and unity, but also echoes with the suffragette purple, serving as an encouragement to women. 
And in Trump's inauguration ceremony, Clinton wore the symbolic white and present, presented her gesture of protest since white is one of the colors worn by the suffragettes in the early 20th century. In the Girls Inc. luncheon on March 7, 2017, Clinton's red pantsuit implicated her support for the day without women's right as red represents women and femininity and is the color associated with the movement signaling love, energy, and determination. Clinton's combination of the masculine pantsuit and feminist color symbols is a reference to Caroline Halborn's discussion on androgyny, quote, androgyny seeks to liberate an, the individual from the confines of the appropriate Androgyny suggests a spirit of reconciliation between the sexes and suggests further a full range of experience open to individual who may, as women, be aggressive and as men, tender. It suggests a spectrum upon which human beings choose their places without regard to property or custom. And as a result of the participatory culture of social media, internet users are cl also closely involved in the construction of leader images Individual users participate in the, this process of constructing or appropriating leader images online to state political stances, to share critiques, or to show support, or just to entertain themselves. The political candidates' identities are often reconstructed and reinterpreted by different social media users in popularized imagery such as memes and comics with references to popular culture. Interfered by the limitations of the post-truth era, the fragmentation, segregation, and polarization of online information have become more common phenomena. Therefore, the popularized superficial knowledges have taken the center of the political discourse, and the mass production of information on social media has become more and more stereotype-based, headline-driven, and image-oriented. Haskana identifies the political images on social media as what Foucault has defined as low-ranking knowledges, and she argues that, quote, by highlighting issues that are especially um, controversial, internet memes appeal to emotions and, in so doing, can have both a polarizing and galvanizing function, unquote. Here, we can see Trump's active engagement online and his bold social media strategy contributed to the popularization of superficial culture on social media, as well as an increasing participation of voters on social media, and finally led to the revitalization of low-ranking knowledges online during the election. In addition, there are also professionals manipulating and producing influential or controversial Im leader images on social media for either commercial or po political purposes. For instance, numerous websites have produced fake news and negative political imagery, and these posts on social media have accumulated a large amount of page views and shares. By doing this, these websites can gain more click rate and advertising revenue. And besides, the recent scandal of Cambridge Analytica and Facebook exemplifies how voter discouragement is conducted in the digital world during the 2016 election. Based on users' debate data, user-oriented uh, user -oriented dark posts containing negative imagery of some specific political candidates were targeted to certain groups of social media users. For instance, Trump's campaign team constructed negative images of Clinton targeting on African-American voters' Facebook uh, accounts by dark posting Clinton's animations with superimposed tests saying, Hillary thinks African-Americans are super predators. In this case, social media users can be easily exposed to and influenced by the intentionally produced and distributed political images aiming to evoke topical issues, aggrandize stereotypes and conflicts, and depress voters. And to briefly conclude, as what can, we can see from those online leader images of female politicians, gender stereotypes still prevail in American society and become more, even more visible on social media in the post-truth era. To cope with current situation, apart from the institutional changes, efforts should also be made from both societal and individual levels. On the one hand, concerning leadership and leader images, public awareness should be raised to gradually diminish gender stereotypes. People should be given the opportunity to recognize the limitations of the traditionally accepted images of leadership, know that gender differences should not be overestimated, and get exposed to the recent developments and advancements of leadership styles, which, as Roth points out, have encouraged both sexes to adopt more collaborative, interpersonally sensitive approaches. And on the other hand, Social media users should notice the challenges brought by the post-truth era and become aware of how online images 
and the informations are produced and processed to perpetuate gender stereotypes and prejudices. And after all, both in individual users and platforms on social media should allow more, more unbiased, positive, and objective video images of female politicians addressing diversity and equality so as to create a woman-friendly world. Thank you very much.